welcome to Stories Podcast. I'm your host, Amanda Weldon. Today's story is called The Geese Who Saved Rome, an adaptation of a Roman legend written for you by Daniel Hines. Thanks. Enjoy the episode. The Geese Who Saved Rome Once upon a time, the city of Rome was an ancient wonder. It was the first true metropolis, a sprawling city with towers and walls and suburbs and fields. This was more than 2,000 years ago, but the Romans had already started creating roads and books and concrete and even indoor plumbing. They had aqueducts bringing fresh water into the city so there was plenty to eat and drink. Rome was truly a city of riches in the ancient world. But riches always attract those who would steal them for themselves. To keep themselves safe, the Romans, of course, had a mighty army. But they also had help at home. In the heart of the city, near the Capitol Hill, they had some guard animals. There were the dogs, big like tamed wolves sent by the god Apollo to watch over the streets. There were mighty eagles sent by Jupiter to watch over the city from the sky. And finally, thought of last and usually never, were the geese. They were the typical long-necked honking sort, quick to nip or steal a bite of bread. They had been sent by Juno to watch over the holy pond near her temple, and they spent their days splashing around in the water and eating plants and bread. The dogs and the eagles weren't very impressed. Ho there, geese! said the majestic eagle, flapping down to land on a nearby rock. Haven't you had enough playtime? What do you mean? asked Regina, the leader of the geese. You're just sitting here in the pond, splashing all day. You should be in the skies with us eagles, watching over Rome. The geese looked at each other and laughed a big honking laugh. Oh, well, you've got that under control, Regina said. Us geese are supposed to watch the pond. This is our little kingdom, and we've got it handled. The eagle looked down his proud beak at the geese all splashing and honking and swimming happily in the water. Looks more like one great big playtime to me, the eagle said. Well, looks can be deceiving, (laughs) said Regina. Now, if you excuse me, I see a person throwing bread over there. She turned from the eagle and swam over to the edge of the pond, where some humans were pitching in their crusts. The eagle shook his mighty head and flew back into the skies. What was his problem? asked Regina's friend Augie, another one of the geese. No idea, said Regina a little sadly, even as she snatched up a piece of bread. But he doesn't seem to like us very much. Because we have fun? You can do your job and still have fun. Regina smiled at that, but it was short-lived. A pack of the big, wolfy guard dogs came strutting over near the pond. They gave the geese dirty looks and leaned down to drink out of their pond. Oh, hey there, Regina said, waving a wing. Good to see fellow guards at work. Our water is your water. The big dogs all laughed until they were howling. They rolled on the ground and their tails wagged wildly. Hey, Regina said, what's so funny? Oh, you think you're fellow guards, a big dog said, her tongue lolling pink. You're pets. At least the eagles fly and keep watch from the air while we patrol the ground. What do you watch? One little pond? Well, Judo sent us to watch her temple, said Augie. We do a pretty good job. The wolf dogs all howled with laughter. You think you help guard anything? Us and the eagles, we are fierce. We are symbols of strength and courage and pride. You? The wolves looked over the geese, flapping for bread and honking back and forth. You're just a bunch of trashy water raccoons. Oh, excuse me, Regina said. We do our job, same as you. Just because we like to honk and chase bread doesn't mean we aren't good at it. 
The wolves all howled again and then loped away from the pond. The other geese quickly forgot all about it. They went back to honking and darting after floating bits of bread, but Regina couldn't get it out of her head. The geese were here to watch over Rome, same as the others, but they never got any respect. She whispered a little prayer to Juno to let the geese be good at their jobs, to let them make Rome proud. And then, sighing at the rising moon, she went back to her friends in the water. Unknown to all in the city, the Roman army had suffered a terrible loss. They had been warring with a kingdom known as the Gauls, been defeated in the field and were now in full retreat, running back to the safety of Rome's walls. The soldiers arrived back at the city late at night, and they instantly went on full alert. Raiders! A lookout screamed, calling the guards in the city to arms. Raiders are coming! Everyone to your posts! The soldiers lined the walls with spears and torches and short swords. The city's quiet night erupted in chaos as Rome prepared for the Gaul invaders. The wolf dogs were out prowling the streets, noses sniffing the ground. The eagles perched in their aries, their cunning eyes blazing down on the city below. The geese swam in their pond. They couldn't sleep with all the excitement. So they paddled about and tried to keep their heads up as all around them the soldiers ran back and forth. The Gauls had seen all the defenses go up, and they knew they couldn't take the Great Hill of Rome by force. Instead, the invaders made a plan to sneak in and open up the defenses. They picked a small team of their best scouts, soldiers who could climb and sneak about without being found. The scouts armed themselves with daggers and ropes and began to slowly climb up a rough, forgotten part of the city wall. The guards were looking for an invasion and didn't spot a handful of sneaky scouts in the darkness. Luckily, they had their animal guards, the eagles and the wolf dogs, to help. And the eagles were watching, staring intently down at the city, but their eyes weren't nearly as sharp in the dark. They could pick out Roman soldiers running about in the torchlight, but the sneaky Gauls may as well have been invisible. The dogs could see better, but their main weapon was their sense of smell. However, the clever scouts of the Gauls knew about that, and they made sure the wind was blowing away from them. The breeze would carry their scent away from the cities and the dogs, allowing them to creep up close and rip open Rome's defenses. The invaders believed they had thought of everything, but they had made one terrible mistake. They didn't know about Regina and her friends. Geese can see better than dogs, especially at night, and their hearing is sharp, too. Regina and the others were swimming, tense from the city being on alert, when they saw some shadowy forms drop over the wall and land by their pond with gentle thumps. Those don't look like Romans, Regina said. Augie coasted over to her in the water, peering after her into the dark. I see. I see gall colors under their coats. He turned to Regina, his eyes wide and beak open. What do we do now? Regina narrowed her eyes and lifted her long neck proudly. Now we do our jobs. And then she lifted her beak to the sky and let out the longest, loudest honk anyone had ever heard. Augie joined her a second later, and then the rest of the pond joined in too. It was a beautiful, ear-shattering chorus of honking, echoing and sharp as any dog's bark. Geese were honking and flapping and going wild, and the Gaul scouts sat frozen, knowing their cover had been blown. Honk! What's the commotion here? Called a group of guards, rushing over to the geese. Regina flapped towards the intruders, and the guards saw them at last. Invaders! They shouted. The Gauls, seeing that they were outnumbered, turned and tried to run. The guards drove them from the walls and sent them tumbling back to the valley below. When the attack had been repelled and the city secured, the guards came back to the geese. 
The sun was shining now as early morning spread golden over the city. We were saved last night, said the legate, the leader of the guards. Not by our swords or walls, not by our eagles or dogs, but by our geese. Honk, Regina said in reply. You noble birds have done this city a great service, and you shall have a pond more befitting your stature. The geese were celebrated by everyone, and their pond by the temple was beautifully decorated and visited daily by happy humans who wanted to share their bread and cakes and treats. All of that felt good to Regina, but nothing felt as good as when the eagles and the wolf dogs came to visit. You did a good job, said the great eagle. We were lucky to have you, agreed the wolf dogs. And then, to the shock of all the geese, the eagles and wolf dogs stopped, dipped low, and bowed to them. And from that day on, the geese were sacred to the people of Rome, and they never failed to do their duty in keeping watch. And even to this very day, geese are still protective of their ponds, which are their own little roams. And if you get too close, you just might be chased off by a gaggle of honking, flapping furies. The End Thanks for listening! Thank <laughs> you.